Well, here we are down at Glenunga, and I'm joined by the new president, uh, Tom Edwards. First of all, welcome, Tom. Thanks, Tony. Great to have you here tonight. Yeah, well, uh, mate, you're looking uh, very young too, but we'll see you by the end of the year how uh, how things scrub up. The club is in a great place, mate. First of all, tell us uh, off-field what's been happening over the pre-season. I think most of the work, like a lot of clubs, happens during the pre-season, so it's been busy up until this point. Hopefully in a few weeks when the season starts, we can almost take a back step and it'll be business as usual. <laughs> but yeah. it's been very busy, but we're all looking forward to 2024. And uh, on field, you've got a very strong team there uh, and coaches. So a bit of a change with the coaches in regards to assistance and so on, but great structure. Yeah, it's a fantastic structure. I think one thing that Nathan Grimer provides is that great overview for not only the A grade, but also the Bs and Cs. Bringing Alex Guy in as our new assistant coach will hopefully prove pivotal and he'll be another resource which the boys will be able to go to. But beyond the scene, Juniors too. We're really excited about the juniors. We have about six, seven hundred juniors running around the club, which uh, sometimes we're a victim of our own success in terms of oval space, allocation, yeah. resourcing. But overall, we're super excited about this year. Uh, so, Tom, you touched on the juniors, mate. Uh, what are the numbers out there at the moment? Or do you know how many teams there are? Probably an on-the-spot question, but it's been massive out here at Glenunga. Yeah, it's huge. We're probably about 35 teams, roughly. Um, and one pride of the club overall has really been the growth of our girls' program. So right. in 2017, we started with about 70 girls. Now in 2024, we're hoping to have around 250. So we're really excited about that being the choice, the club of choice for girls' football, for grass. Yeah football and we're hoping to expand it and hopefully in the coming weeks we'll have an exciting announcement to make um, about a partnership with a very high profile player. So just for the people out there watching, uh, talk about club of choice, how do you frame that and for any young girls out there who want to come out and have a kick, how do they go about it because as you said the, the care, you know they're in safe hands and they're learning and developing as well, how do we go about it? Yeah absolutely, obviously winning is important both in the seniors and the juniors but it's also about creating a fun safe and inclusive environment for right. the juniors um, and really something which Glenunga prides itself on is having a community aspect and so it doesn't matter for example if you're in the A grade of the seniors or if you're in the under 10 girls everybody should feel welcome to come to Glenunga play and importantly from the juniors and the junior girls have fun along the process uh, that sounds fantastic Tom I think as a parent it's important that people hear that it's not just come out and have a kick and go back home again. Now uh, we're going to have a bit of fun here folks because Tom we've, you're dressed in all the kit, you're actually training you're, you're actually a player uh, we won't say what grade, B grade but uh, <laughs> now you're the president uh, at training and games are you 100% player or are you in the midst of a game or training and someone will come up and say hey Pres can we get some new footies or have you looked at my contract yet is it 50-50? What happens are you 100% player or are you still president on the track? Well for me me, at a training and games, I'm a player first and foremost. In fact, I almost don't like it when people call me Prez. I just want to be okay. yep. Tommy in the B grade or even the A grade or C grade. Who knows? We'll find out. Um, but I think it's all about making sure that you have that split role yep. um, and having a clear delineation between a player and a president. Uh, very well answered. And I hope the players out there are watching this and <laughs> they say, we'll take that under our, uh, under our wing and go with it. Now, uh, the charter for 2024 for Glenunga and have you expanded out and had a look at maybe the next three to five years? Yeah, we do have a long-term strategy plan. Um, probably for us, things which we want to work on includes oval allocation. Yep. Being such a large club, unfortunately, we are a victim of our own success sometimes, yep. particularly from the juniors and finding enough oval space. Also, we would love to increase our volunteer capacity. Like okay. all clubs, yep. we are run on volunteers um, and trying to get more people involved would be great. Well, we see that. I'm going to head over in a moment, folks. The, the barbecue's on tonight on a uh, Thursday night, and the guys are out here, and they're all volunteers, and, and no club uh, gets by without its volunteers. So that's a, that's a huge point to make there, Tom. doesn't matter the level or the grade that we're in. Uh, volunteers are a vital, integral part of our clubs. Right, our sponsors, we've got a few written out here, so uh, let's see whether you can remember them or I'll get you to read them well, out. They're, because they're, they're written down, so hopefully I would know them because they're in front of me, but our major 
sponsors. We do have quite a few and obviously being a community club, we do operate on thin margins. So we're very appreciative of all of our sponsors. Right. Our major ones include Shaw Partners, yeah. Star Electrical, EDC, the Parkside Hotel, our new pub of choice for the year, yeah, like Leading that. Teams and Ray White Kensington. So again, being a community club, sponsors are really important for us and we would say a very big thank you to all of them. And uh, I'll back that up as well. Do you have a tiered sponsor? So if someone's out there watching and they've they've got, you know, there might only be a couple of hundred dollars or it might be thousands, so there's a tiered way that they can go about the sponsorship. Yeah, to be honest with you, you'll take any money we can, but uh, ah, there, there, there is a tiered sponsorship yeah. and that is obviously um, broken down by what you get in return. Um, but any local business, family, community involvement, we would welcome you to come out here to Glenunga. We are one of the largest clubs in South Australia, so you do you get your bang for your buck. All right, Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, we are sponsored by Archie, so uh, we have the pair of Archie's thongs there for you, if you can hold them up for everyone out there. And uh, an absolute pleasure to come down and join you tonight, give us access to the players, to the coaches, and the barbecue, of course. We wish you all the best for season 2024. Thanks very much. Cheers. Well, folks, we're down here at Glenunga Oval, and we have a new captain at Glenunga this year, Abe Davis. Welcome, Abe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. An outstanding season last year. A few players have cleared out. Uh, a vacancy comes up for the captaincy. Uh, who would you say your leadership style is influenced by, whether it be past captains and or coaches? Um, oh, coming through the, the Swans Academy and going through Sydney, I certainly had a lot of... Um, some really strong leaders there and yep. I sort of pick and pick from a couple of different guys through there and I got to watch the way Alex went about it last year um, I mean look Alex left such a big hole that we needed to name a leadership group this year so yeah I'll uh, yeah I'll, I'll be sticking to my strengths with it and not trying to get too controlling um, with the boys and well, yeah, I've got um, Nick Wunky and Tully Kennett there to help me out as well so between the three of us we should be able to get it done well we'll be covering every game in the Adelaide Football League in Division 1 this year so we'll keep an eye on that and about round three or four if I'm over there on the boundary and you're screaming and yelling I'll just remind you of uh, of what was said tonight but I, I think your coach does enough of that you'll probably be the calming influence the buffer Absolutely. how have you found the pre-season and you know, you know a lot of the guys from last year, but there's a lot of new faces, so it's getting to know them as well. How have you found it? Yeah, pre-season, my favourite time of the year. I love it. Um, ah, you're an honest man. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, look, it's it's always, it's always good getting to uh, getting to know the new blokes and watching the way they fit in. It's it is really tricky because it's not, you can play all the trial games and internal trials you want, but until you get to round one, round two, it's really hard to to really gel and see how other guys are going to operate in the uh, crunch time of a game. Um, so we're looking forward to that. The first couple of rounds will be interesting for us, considering that a large portion of our midfield um, has rolled yeah, over yeah. this year yeah, yeah. so yeah, new Rock we've got new guys like Oliver Cheeseman Decky Fay in um, Tully right. Kennedy will step up and take a bigger role this year so it'll be interesting but I'm confident that we've got a group that can um, that can go a fair way with it this year and you touched on that Abe uh, the serious side of things getting the group to gel you know how, how do we do that what are some of the methods that you uh, you might use or you go in conjunction with the coach because you're an extension of the coach's message as well yeah it's uh, it, it is a it is a hard one to, to find what the what the best way to get the team mm. to gel, especially when we've got so many new guys that'll be playing in our A grade side in round one. Little things like we've got um, Asto working the barbecue at the moment, get guys to hang around after training. Um, as, as much as it's to my reluctance, you know, if we have to go to the pub and have a couple and get to know each other that way, if, if you yeah. have to, if I have to do it, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take the boys to the pub and do that. But I think it's just it's just about spending time together and just. It's, at the start it might be putting in a little bit of effort but by, by the end of it you're all mates and you're all part of the same club so well, we talk about sacrificial acts and that's uh, hanging around for the barbecue and uh, heading off to the pub but of course in all due respect we do have to get a leave pass at times so uh, you know if there's anyone out there watching just be a bit lenient on uh, on our leaders and, and also the players that have to attend as well because rules and regulations how else are we supposed to bond Abe I'm hearing you when's the next session by the way yeah if I have, <laughs> if, uh, look if I have to put one on Saturday for gather round then I'll, I'll do it oh, yeah. right oh Abe well uh, the position played and spreading the word. Now, what position do you play for anyone out there? What a foolish question. Because we know, come on, give it to us. Yeah, midfielder. I roam the centre square and uh, and leave the uh, outside running to the other blokes. 
Now, having said that, didn't you kick 10 in a game last year? We won't mention the opposition. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did. resting. I did manage to kick 10. Uh, to be fair, I think that was more the uh, service my teammates gave me than me doing anything. So, uh, Nice answer. Now, playing in the midfield, it is important that you follow the ball. And with Glenunga getting a lot of the ball, dominating throughout the season, you had to go forward. What happens when the opposition gets it and go back? Do you, do you actually go past that centre line or do you just yell out to one of the other leaders down the ground come on you blokes well it'll be interesting this year because we had uh, Sam Monkey down there last year who was our absolute rock and uh, pillar so without him this year we'll have to have guys step up um, we've, we've got guys in this year that they certainly gut run both ways um, I can see you looking at me sideways and I'll be I absolutely gut run both ways so oh you don't have to God. worry about that yeah um, but yeah look, I've got complete trust in our back six and I think we've got Zach Smith down there who he'll step up and take over a lot of uh, what Sam Monkey was doing last year um, and he'll be the leader in the voice down there so no, fantastic, Abe. It sounds like you've got it worked out and in all seriousness. You know, it is important to have leaders in all areas that you can call on. OK, pre-game. We're in the rooms. Nathan's uh, belting away at the game plan and giving all the instructions and that. Do you get a word in? And then I'm really intrigued on game day. You know when they do the little huddle after the toss and you go back, do you have a second bite at the cherry in there? And what might be something that's said... First of all, do you get a go in the room? So let's go through that one first. No, not, not a oh, chance. Um, there it is. Nathan, Nathan has a crack for about 45 minutes in there. So yeah. I, the only thing I do in the rooms is maybe wake a couple of the boys up after he's put them to Good. sleep. Yep. Um, look, the only thing going through my head after the coin toss is just remember which way you're going. Yeah. Always and important. it doesn't matter if I don't say a word after that, but... Uh, yeah, as long as I remember which way I'm going, I'm fine, and then get in a couple of words because, as you can hear, Nathan still loves the sound of his own voice, and you can hear him now. So <laughs> he is calling out too. Uh, how would you like your captaincy to be remembered, legacy, mate? What are they going to say about you in five to ten years? Uh, yeah, that, that's that's an interesting one. Uh, as long as there's nothing too negative, then I'm all right with it. I mean, look, hopefully after the end of this year, we'll be uh, catching up at fairly regularly for premiership reunions so that'd be nice um, but yeah as long as there's nothing too negative I can live with that. Alright you're an absolute champion Abe thank you very much we wish you all the best for the season of course folks there we are I hope I've got the right size the Archie's thank thongs you. for you now I understand you won a few pairs throughout the year in all different sizes how are, how are things going down here for the boys when they head to the beach they all got the Archie's. Hey, the boys are loving it Glenunga's practically sponsored by uh, Archie's at the moment so um, yeah I'm glad that I've got a pair to take home now but uh, yeah no the, boy, the boys love them they are uh, walk around the club with them and after game so yeah can't recommend them enough all right thanks very much for joining us abe and we wish you all the best for the season thank you thank you very much well once again an absolute pleasure to be joined by uh, nathan grimer down here at glenunga division one coach and uh first of all welcome nathan on a quite a breezy night tonight for the boys no nah, thanks for coming down and the effort you make with with all the clubs it is much appreciated and this, we've finally got our goal posts up last week and our line marking so yeah. you know for a club that doesn't get to train here very often once we get back here and and obviously you're getting around speaking to clubs, it's starting to feel like the season's about to kick off. Well, great 2023. We can just have a quick reflection. 16 and 2, uh, you scored 1,601 points for 777 against. Uh, you're only 40 odd points off PAC with the four, so very good up, up front. But your back line was the best in the league, mate, and uh, that, that's a credit to yourself and the team. Uh, we won't go into the granny, it's happened, it's been and done. But now the change of players, yep. we understand a lot of players. Tell us about the recruits, be positive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like, uh, firstly, like the guys that went out, like we could sit up here like every coach and say, you know, yeah. we've lost 20 guys and it, like it, every club loses players. We've had our fair share go for different reasons. We've actually been really lucky with, there's not many guys playing at other Adelaide clubs or Adelaide based league clubs. They're, the guys have moved into state or retired and, yeah. and Darcy Mitchell's our big loss who shot back to his home club and I'd coached Darcy for five years so we wished wow. him well. But we've got, a, we've got an interesting group coming this year. It's getting harder to recruit, I guess, those older guys out of the sample, mainly because because of there is a pretty big commitment still in Div One, uh, even though we try and make it a bit funner for the guys. But it's also that you know, I'm not sure you know how much they get paid, but I hear guys get paid well in the country. I guess as yep. you should if you're willing to give up your weekend and drive you know a seven or eight hour round trip. So we went for the younger end of the scale. So we got in um, Charlie Pridham, who we'd try to get a couple of years earlier, but he signed at Goodwood. Uh, he was at West Adelaide at the time and needed to feed a club. He's a, 
a uh, what got short his junior club is, but it wasn't yeah. Goodwood. So when they got relegated, he's good friends with one of our lads, and I just reached out and said, you know, would you like to come and, and have a kick? Because we got pretty close to getting him, and um, he was happy to come aboard. He's 20, little left right. footer, small back. Um, you know, he he would have averaged close to 25 touches a game for. Goodwood last year. He's just a great lad. You know, he ran a 6.05 2K, which at local level is, is gets yeah. humming. And um, he's actually been an interesting one, Charlie, because he's quiet and reserved, but his action of how he's trained. You know, I'm seeing guys like James Regarkas, who's probably underachieved, and I've told him that with his with his talent. And yep. I think just seeing another kid that's the same age, they played against each other at Sturt and, and West. He's all of a sudden, it's either competitive spirit or a little bit of just seeing how Charlie goes about it. But those two boys will start off half back in round one, and you know they're both 20 and you know wow. if they can get some some synergy I think it would change our ball movement we're pretty stagnant and yeah so Charlie's obviously a big one Declan Fay was a great get I coached Decky or he was at Sturt when I was there so yeah. I had a bit of a relationship I actually cut him from Sturt so I don't know how good that relationship was well, a scoop, when, when, no, went off to good. North Adelaide played some league games we stayed in contact and I was you're always happy to see your players yeah. go well even right. if they're not with you he's really good mates with Nick Eager who had a really good year last year for us down back there by St Peter's lads so had the option to go to, back to his school but yeah lucky for us you know he was here after the grand final and he was often at games right. when he wasn't at North he's played I think four or five league games or maybe yep. so yeah he's, he's 22 midfielder at some run probably replaces Alex Harron um, and uh, Oliver Cheeseman who's on Port's top up list he was at Unley wanted to get up to Div 1 uh, Unley uh, obviously in Div 3 he had not a knock on Unley at all and he had no issue there it's his junior club but uh, once again you know, he's a 6.20 sort of 6.32k runner can, wow. can cover ground not super quick but really clean um, yeah once again I think I cut him from Sturt as well so that might be the, the key it's just keep oh, where I cut they come <laughs> you back you made him that's what happens yeah. you get a bit of a knock back in life and oh, yeah. you so I stand up and I, I uh, go a bit harder and, yeah. and obviously the respect, mate. They've yeah. come out here and it's Division One footy, which is great. Yeah, so there are three, our three young guys, and then the big, the big one for us is uh, we've got Jordan West, who he's a 200 centimetre ruckman, hadn't played wow. for two years. He had some back issues. Played about 20 games of league at West, sorry, at West at Woodville, um, and a lot of reserves. We're stuck in behind some really good ruckmen uh, through that era when you know Mick Godden's coaching and they were winning, yep. you know, playing grand finals. Then Sheeds is there and they're winning yep. grand finals. So he's put, got his body right um, he's got through some training now and you know we've never had the luxury of a dominant ruckman like Nick and um, and Darcy were exceptional as undersized guys last year but that will give Abe a bit more I think opportunity to be a bit more proactive at stoppage um, and then what we had to do because we lost a fair few guys and with the point system which I believe is a great system right. uh, yep. we then went and targeted and some people don't like this and I completely understand why but we went to some guys who were playing B grade at other clubs who we felt we could convert into A grade players and it's not really the the right thing to do be plucking these guys out of, of their clubs if they're playing B grade but you know we want to give our club the best chance of success and we bring them here with a purpose so we got a young lad from Henley that's played predominantly B grade another young lad from um, PAC that had played almost all B grade and uh, and we see them as fitting in as yeah good depth players and hopefully become first you know first 18 players so it's an interesting thought that one because uh, it's called recruiting yeah we have to do it uh, and it happens every year at all clubs and if you can offer you know it's not about money it's what does the yep. club offer you've got success here, you've got great facilities, great people, not saying the clubs that they've come from, but the, some players just want to change, they might be a bit stagnant, or you see something that someone else doesn't, yep. and that's how you develop players. Tell us, talking about developing players, the junior system here at Glenunga is sensational. There, is there a handful of young lads perhaps just coming up to senior football this year or so, and you know, they might not play A grade, but they're in around the squad and just finding their way? Yeah, and I think just quickly back to that one, like we're not bringing in these guys to take the spot of the, our younger guys. Yeah. We're getting role-based like role, role -based players. Like everyone we brought in can run this year. You know, we, the guy from PAC, Aston Woods, you know, he's a 622K, as we said. Um, you know, Ryan Johnson from Henley, he hasn't played a lot of senior footy, but he's a, he's a pretty elite runner. You know, so they've got a purpose and they're not really competing with guys that we've got. You yeah. know, so in saying that, the last three years, we've averaged 42 players every year. So, like, yeah. at the end of the day, they're all going to get a go. It's up to them what they do with it. Just because you were born in, you know, within a stone throw of the oval doesn't mean you deserve the right to play in our A-grade team. Absolutely, we love having you at the club. And, we had our B grade in the grand final last year, first time they've made a grand final in forever. C grade won four or five games and it looks like we'll have about 15, 16 guys miss a game in the first round, whereas last year, yeah. you know, we laughed like Dave Pittman was out for dinner one night and talked to the waiter and asked him to come and have a kick the next day. And that's how we were sort of, <laughs> that's how, yeah, he must have been doing a good yeah. job waiting his table. But that, um, that's how we're sort of getting it and we're ringing around. And, yeah. and now that we've got a bit of excitement um, in the C grade, you know, the younger guys, like we had 30 guys just training before in our underage team, like 
they're excited to be around the club. But the one challenge I will say we have, and it's 100%, um, it's not an issue for my end, but most of our kids go to a PAC, St Peter's, yeah. Ross Trevor, and when you get to senior age footy, and you, you probably want to have a kick with your mates, and like I'm here with your schoolmates. So when, it, like last year we only had two or three kids come up from our under age program, and the rest oh. all dispersed to Sam, because Samples now goes down to under 16s. Yes, yep. So, you know, your better ones are at Sturt or Norwood, and then your, your next ones that have played, say, first 18 at those po uh, private schools are then probably getting asked to go back out to PAC and St Peter's and then we end up with the, probably the next group down but they're, they're just good lads and we've, um, we're have we really wrapped with our group at the moment. So uh, Nathan Grimer giving us a huge insight into uh, Glenunga mate, that is absolutely <laughs> sensational that there. Your new captain Abe, you know we have a bit of fun, we've interviewed him but uh, how was the captain selected? I mean, it's not a popularity contest, but you've got to be able to play. And what does he bring? He's one of those players who who leads by action as well, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think we've probably, uh, as, as strong as we've been uh, as a group in the last two or three years, and our, our, we've been very consistent, we, we do lack leadership within the group and I think every club would say that it's not yep. AFL and you don't need big leadership groups but it's really hard to find someone that's just you know a standout captain the things that A bring is like the grand final for example the, the way he could will himself to get us back in the game and I showed the boys um, our B and F votes uh, against the let's call it the bottom 14 uh, sorry the bottom uh the top four teams, or the, yep. the, us and the other three, and the rest, and and you know, we had guys that were finishing top five in the BNF that barely polled a vote in those games, and and Abe had polled more votes by himself than about eighteen other guys combined in those games. Like he, he got the maximum votes, you know, I think seven of the eight games, and as he should, he's a quality player. But I think if you're going to be a leader at local level, it's all good to be vocal and and you know, and, and talk up. But unless you can get a kick on the game, it's it's local footy. You still want your best players to be leading the group. So yeah, for me, standout leader Tully. Kenneth will back him up and Tully again his foot is starting to get to the level where we know it can be. I can see him as an elite mid hopefully this year but you know he's someone that's still got to work on his game and I, and I know he will but he's probably more respected for the way he, he's always first to training, he does his extra craft, he's yeah. engaged in vision and he's not afraid to have an opinion. Like I'm pretty hard on the guys as you would have seen and he'll often say mate I, don't, I didn't that. agree with what you said but you know I respect you and you know, I'm not going to go against you but hey like can we have a chat about it and you know when guys have the you know the the, and, they, and they back it up with their actions. And then the third guy in that group is Nick Wanky. Yep. So it's a really nice mix. Nick's got the year of the group. So, you know, he'd be the one that would come up to me and be like, hey, you've probably been a bit hard on the boys. Or, hey, mate, you might want to go and have a chat to, to Tony because, you know, he's a bit down. Or, hey, like, he, he, he'd see that. So they just right. complement each yeah. other really well. And and I think, yeah, and I think, you know, if I'm hard on him or Abe's hard on him or, or something's happening, then he's the one that can sort of... Yeah, you've got someone inside the camp, and I think that works really well. So that's a good group, um, you know, and I think they're a good group to take us, hopefully, to that next step next year or this year. So talking about that, uh, new faces in, faces out, but I think still a huge strength Glenunga are going to be. Do you tinker much with the game plan? We know you uh, kick fast and long into the forwards. We've heard you on, it's no secret to anyone, because we hear you on game day, get it in fast <laughs> and long, yeah. and it works. Yeah. So have you tinkered much with the game plan and only what we need to know? Yeah, I think what we do, it's not it's not a great surprise, but we've tracked some data uh, over the last three years. The average possession chain in our local footy games when teams have played is two, two and a half before a turnover. So in really layman's terms, we're saying, let's try and get it as far as we can with two possessions. And that doesn't mean that we won't look short. But, you know, we've won some games last year where we've had 250 possessions and kicked 130 points. You know, and we've yep. played a team that's had it 350 times and kicked 60 points. Like, there's more yep. than, you know, more than one way to skin a cat. But I guess I know if you limit your turnovers, the opposition doesn't have it. We weren't a great running team, which meant we weren't then running back to goal. And you can play the game in your half um, because obviously the closer to goal, you get your higher percentages of, of scoring and less getting scored against. But where we have come unstuck and what that data doesn't show is against the best three teams. So last year, the Port, before they dropped off in the back end of the year, PAC five times, uh, what did we play them? Five times and uh, shop twice. We only averaged 58 points a game. It's just not going to stack well, up. Yeah, yeah, it's poor. Our, our numbers, are, uh, our average winning margin last year was 50 points. Um, but, you know, it's... it's Look, you've got to be realistic with the guys. When you're going into a grand final, you're pumping up, hey, we are the best defensive team. We are the best, you know, points four team. You know, we have the most shots on goal in the comp. But you know deep down that you've still got to find a way to, you've got to get better. And we just laid it bare and said, you know, boys, these are the guys that didn't get a vote against those best six teams. Like, look, we've got to improve. This is where we couldn't score. Our, our inside 50s were down. Our conversion was down. So let's let's not forget what we do well, but we've got to find a way to kick 75 points to win those bigger games. So, so Nathan, this, this is, uh, I could talk for 
Freer. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's because, it is. It's fascinating <laughs> because, uh, you know, for some of the clubs out there, this is the amount of work you've done over the pre-season. Don't just turn up and, oh, well, look, we've got a cracking squad here. Uh, let's go again. It's, OK, what do we need to tinker with? What do we need to fix up? The next thing is, and I'll put you on toast a little bit here, you know, 2024, uh, success or development, I think you've just about answered it. Can it be repeated? Is there belief there? Yeah, I think, well, year on year we've definitely improved. First year went from winless to a grand final, go up to Div 1, we make top three, get bundled out, and then last year we get to a grand final. And I said to the guys the other night, and, you know, I don't mind saying this again, I've always believed at local level, once you're not taking a group forward, well, give someone else a go. It's not, yep. you know, it's not a career, and there's, you know, there's more to life than just staying at, coaching a team for the sake of it. So I've sort of said to them, like, without saying we've got to go on and win the grand final, there'd have to be things where we, you know, we, we move the ball better or we play a, a brand that's, hey, yeah, these guys are improving. And, you know, if we do that, we'll go close. But if we don't, then I'll just let someone else have a go and I'll just support the guys from afar. Because four years now going into it, if, you know, we've been in front in two grand finals at half time and haven't yeah. got the chocolates. My finals record is abysmal. Um, if I can't, say, go get there and win this year, well, I know I've done my best for the club and I can sleep easy and I'll give, you know, I've got Alex Guy helping now who's at Athelstan yep. and he's coming on as an assistant. And if, and if AG wanted to, to step in and, and the club were happy for that, well, I'd be happy to move on. And yeah, but bloody, I, I, I'm going to give it everything personally this year because for me, I don't know if I'll coach much after this with my kids. And, yep. you know, I don't have a premiership and I know it's not about the coach, but I'd love to achieve something for these guys that I could come back with, you know, in 10 years' time and, and have a drink with. But at the same time, like, Oh, we've lost two now, and after about a day, you're not over it, but you're like, well, let's just get on with it. Well, Kevin Cheedy always used to say when there was old 12 teams, only one team can be, a, only one coach can be a premiership coach, and does that mean the other 11 have failed? Well, no, they haven't, because you go back and you review and you say, well, how do you measure success? Is it development of people? Is it players going off to league clubs? Is it enjoyment around the place? And, you know, you see happy, smiling faces, and like you say, I, I know we've had the chat off here, mate, the amount of care that you take, it's not Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's the other stuff that yeah. you do away from game day and training, mate, that is super important because you're developing life skills, not just footballers. So, Nathan Grover, we can't thank you enough. If you do retire at the end of the year, there is a media, there is a media career for you, trust me, as long as you don't wear the press hat. But, yeah. no, absolutely sensational. I think the other important thing for you there, which you are about, is if you've got the uh, the players which you have, you can drive them, you can push this squad. You, you've got a great squad to work with. So, mate, we, uh, we can't thank you enough for your uh, uh, background and, and giving us a few of the insights into how things work down here. We've got a pair of Archie's thongs there and uh, I understand they may go to someone else depending but uh, he did mention new Ruckman big. there but yeah, yeah oh, they uh, big ones. The if he gets yeah, yeah. recruiting recruiting yeah. Uh, ploy there yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah. thank you very much mate. We'll see you every week uh, of course covering the game so thank you yeah. so much for joining nah, us mate. I better finish by saying I hope it came across right and if we don't I don't think I'm not sitting here thinking we're going to win it or I'm going to quit it's more you know, it's local footy, you know, you can develop guys and try and win it every year and if you don't win it, you're disappointed. So, yep. once again, I'm not saying that I think we're going to win it. I'm confident we'll give ourselves a big crack and, you know, I think Broadview will be right around the mark, Port District, yeah. Shock, PAC, you can never write off and it's going to be a great comp. So, thanks for your support and thanks for the, for the thongs. Exciting times ahead. Thanks very much, Nathan. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Folks, the Glenunga barbecue is on. Have a look at this. It's training night, Thursday night. Apparently some other mob have got a bit of footy going on around Adelaide, but have a look at this group here. So we've got, first of all, in the hat, uh, Chris Aston. We've got... Uh, you're the footy director, Chris, is that correct? I am, yes. There you are there. <laughs> Did that well, didn't we? Uh, we've also got, uh, well, Dave Mitchell, the club stalwart. How are you, Dave? Uh, still alive. Still alive? Well, you will be too, eating that sausage, mate. Uh, Kylie Wisman, the treasurer. Welcome, Kylie. Hi. Now, uh, for those of you out there, the Wisman name is well known in the league team and uh, the senior team. And I said, is that your brother or your husband, Kylie? Well, it's her son. You wouldn't believe it. And uh, Andrew Edwards over here. Have a look at this, blokes. They call him the Fox. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Welcome. Now, they tell me, uh, first of all, it was 400 and something games. He said, no, it was 200 and something. But, uh, well, volunteers around clubs are absolutely sensational. So have a look at this. The barbecue, first of all, I uh, might start with Chris. Uh, how often is the barbecue on? Oh, we do it a couple of times a year. We're doing it at the moment to get the players out to register. So a bit of an incentive. 
All right, and Kylie, the uh, treasurer, of course, of the club, so this is sensational. How much are we charging for the uh, sausages and onions and bread? It's free tonight. The uh, treasurer giving away food, so, well, that's the end of you, Kylie. Uh, uh, what is on the hot plate, Fox? What have we got going? We've only got some onions left. We've cooked about, uh, say, uh, 100 sausages, so just the onions are browning up now. Yes, and uh, do we do any type of other fare? Uh, Dave, have you ever had a hamburger? off this barbecue or chops or steak do they look, get it going that barbecue would have kicked would have uh, would have fed about uh, thousands thousands of people yeah burgers steaks it's probably due for renewal all right uh, now I'll, I'll ask this question see who gets to answer it how do the players go and who comes up for seconds? Oh, be Nathan Grimer. Yeah, Na Nathan <laughs> Grimer has about three or four serves. Yeah. It uh, elbows the players out the way. So once he's got some, they get to have what's left. Absolutely. The coach, first in, best dress. How do you go, Foxy? You're a big boy. When he comes in, do you just say, uh, oh, that's a bit, yeah, yeah move, move him aside, or you no, just no, go, no, let him go? We have a lot of respect for Nathan, uh, the, the A-grade coach, the North ex-North Melbourne player. So no, a lot of respect for Nathan. All right. Well, uh, fantastic job by all of you. We can't thank you enough for what you do for the for the fantastic playing group out here. I could smell that from 100 metres away and I thought I've got to get up here and get an interview. So uh, we thank you all. Oh, well, have a look at that. Now, Mr Mitchell, just uh, tell us, how does that sausage look? Do you reckon that's been well cooked? Yes, and that's the best way. Well, you're the official taster. I noticed you chomping into one as we started the interview. So uh, there we are, folks. That's what's happening down here at Glenunga. We can't thank you all uh, enough. Great volunteers. Every club should have them. And fantastic example of what can do when people chip in and help out. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.